My name is Gursant Singh, and for all of you who don't know, I was with this Yogi Bhajan Tantric Kundalini Yoga cult for some 30 years. I even wrote a book about my experiences and my close contacts with Yogi Bhajan in 2012. It's called Confessions of American Sikh, and it's available on Amazon for all of you who'd like to read details of my experiences. Now, today in this video, I'm going to talk about my experience with Yogi Bhajan, specifically about the hypnotic and mind control techniques that I observed Yogi Bhajan practicing and using against his students to control them and to use them for power, money, and sex. Now, there have been new revelations that have come out as a result of a new book that was published by Pamela Dyson. The new book is called Premka, and this is a memoir of Pamela's experiences with Yogi Bhajan. She was the top assistant to Yogi Bhajan. And in this book, she really describes in detail how Yogi Bhajan used these neuro-linguistic techniques to manipulate her and control her through these mind control and neuro-linguistic techniques, hypnosis. There was a recent interview with a Stephen Hassan, who is a cult expert. Many of you may have heard of him before. And he describes specifically in there how he knew that Yogi Bhajan was using this neuro-linguistic programming. This was in 1980 that the Stephen Hassan became involved with this neuro-linguistic programming. This was in Santa Cruz, California. Now, it just so happens that I took the training there with this Richard Bandler and John Grinder uh, the neuro linguistic programming course that they offered at the University of California there at Santa Cruz. That was in 1980. It was just about the same time. It may have been the same course that I took, that Stephen Hassan took, that he describes in this video interview with Pamela Dyson. So, first, I want you to listen to what Pamela says about how Yogi Bhajan manipulated her and used this mind control technique of neuro-linguistic programming uh, to get what he wanted out of her. And then Stephen Hassan, the cult expert, describes specifically this NLP or neuro-linguistic programming technique that Yogi Bhajan was being trained in. And then we'll talk a little bit about more knowledge that I have about who Yogi Bhajan was, was learning this from in 3HL. So listen to this uh, clip from the interview with Stephen Hassan and Pamela. What was revealed through the book, what people really have been moved by because the book just blew apart the kundalini yoga world which i had no idea had become so huge and i think what really was so impactful to people was first of all my 
honesty in you know my own taking my re- my own responsibility for mm-hmm. having been so gullible and for having participated to the level that I did. Um, what was so moving, I believe, to people and what I hear over and over again is the way they get to hear. What they learn about him is from his own dialogue. What they learn about, you know, the, the way that he manipulated is through that dialogue with me, you know, our exchanges through events and dialogue. <clears throat> so I think, you know, that's the more interesting part of what occurred is the, you know, is the mind, um, the mind control aspects of how he operated from the very beginning. One of the strongest teachings he gave us was never to listen to a negative, any negativity towards the teacher. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry for laughing. Yeah. It's such a universal with the structure of cult leaders. You're not allowed to criticize the leader, the doctrine, or the group. You're not allowed to talk to anybody else except your superior, and if, if at all. You, and if you hear anything negative against the teacher, it will poison you. It will, and it will take you down. It will take you away from your spiritual path and your spiritual destiny. It's one of the most fearsome things to avoid is to ever hear negativity about your teacher and to have doubt. Yes. To have doubt. Um, In other words, to think for yourself about what you're experiencing directly. Right, right. And so what my book also shares so uh, effectively is the dual voices in my own mind, the the fight, the struggle with my doubts, with my logical perceptions versus my sure. my commitment and my um, dogmatic faith. Sure. And yeah, so I think that people really, really were, um, they could really identify, people could really identify. Yeah what my process was. I got the program from the Moonies in 76 and started learning about brainwashing and mind control for years and mm-hmm. sought out former military intelligence people, etc. But there was a missing element for me and I didn't know what it was until 1980 when I first was exposed to something called neuro-linguistic programming or mm-hmm. NLP. Yeah. I met Richard Bandler who I thought was a sociopath right off, but mm-hmm. I was intrigued to understand what is this thing, hypnosis. And I wound up moving with my, my, my then wife to Santa Cruz to become trained as a trainer in NLP. And um, I became a, an apprentice to John Grinder, although that was at the period where Bandler's wife was leaving him and the whole thing started breaking apart as a mm-hmm. formal structure. And I should add, Tony Robbins learned NLP, and his work is based on NLP. Oh, but wow. but where, we're, where I'm getting to is when I was being trained, I, 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 I got to know uh, that Yogi Bhajan was being trained in NLP. Really? Which is covert hypnotic processes. And NLP is based on the work of a psychiatrist named Milton Erickson. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mm E-R-I-C-K-S-O-N, who developed a process form of of hypnosis, which is very powerful. And um, and, and a lot of cult leaders use hypnotic processes, but Yogi Bhajan was the first actual cult leader who I knew was studying mind control techniques in order to use it to control women, to control men, to make money, to have sex, to have more power. So um, I'm hoping more of that story will emerge in in the future, but I did did want to say that. I knew that NLP was, it was kind of around it. I actually heard somewhere along the way that he told people not to learn it. I suppose that was so that they wouldn't figure out what he was doing. Bingo. Bingo, because yeah. then people could could see the patterns, yeah. the, the linguistic patterns, and and, yeah. and and it would take away some of the aura, the mystical sacred aura yeah. uh, of him. 
So this is very interesting now that you've listened to this clip from the video interview that Stephen Hassan did with Pamela. First of all, Stephen Hassan describes how he moved to Santa Cruz, where he learned these neurolinguistic programming techniques from Richard Bandler and John Grinder, who are sort of the creators of this NLP. And as I said earlier, I was there at the University of California also and received certification in this NLP. Now, right off when I took this course, I realized that these neurolinguistic techniques were very powerful and they could be also very damaging and uh, a, be used for corrupt purposes, let's put it that way. In fact, I was really turned off by a demonstration that Richard Bandler did when I was there during the course. Um, Stephen Hassan describes Richard Bandler as a sociopath. And I, like I said, really um, knew right away when I took this course how it was not something that I wanted to uh, use in uh, counseling or any kind of um, other type of healing practice. So that gives you an indication how Yogi Bhajan uh, latched on to this neurolinguistic programming as a way to uh, control his students for power, money, and sex. Now, the reason I was completely turned off by this neurolinguistic programming is because, like I said, Richard Bandler hypnotized several people in the audience in one of these big seminar um, classes that we had as part of this certification. And he made him do all of these crazy things, um, running up and down the aisles and just doing crazy stuff. And it just didn't impress me as something that was for healing purposes or that was um, for, for good, in other words. Um, it just impressed me as something that was manipulating people and getting them to do what you wanted them to do. So that immediately turned me off. Now, um, I know that Yogi Bhajan was studying this and learning this neuro-linguistic programming or these hypnotic techniques from the head of the ashram in Eugene, Oregon, who was Dr. Sakrapal Singh. He was very interested in, in these um, NLP techniques. And so when I returned from Santa Cruz, where I was learning these techniques in 1980, I returned to the ashram up there in Eugene, Oregon. I reported back to him and showed him all of my notes and all of the um, uh, books that I had received and manuals, we'll say, of this for the certification. So we had lots of meetings about it. There was also another 3HO person who was highly involved in it, a Stephen Josephs, um, who is from Boston, and a Viriam Singh Khalsa. Viriam Singh was a uh, psychologist who worked in uh, Springfield for the state of Oregon, and I think he still does. And in fact, Viriam Singh is the, uh, one of the board members on this uh, Suri Singh Saab Corporation board that controls all of the Yogi Bhajan uh, businesses and organizations. And he was highly involved in this uh, neuro-linguistic programming techniques also. And I believe that he also spoke with Yogi Bhajan about it. Uh, in fact, there was a meeting, I remember, I recall, in Bend, Oregon, where Dr. Saram Singh from Los Angeles, many of you may have heard of him. He's an MD um, who had a clinic there in Los Angeles and was one of the doctors for Yogi Bhajan. He came to Bend, Oregon, along with this Stephen Josephs, this Dr. Sakrapal Singh, and uh, Viriam Singh 
came to a meeting we all had in Bend, Oregon at a cabin. I believe the cabin was owned by um, this uh, near Bo Singh, who eventually went on to um, create kettle chips. Uh, probably many of you have heard about it. Anyway, um, so we all had this meeting and we were discussing all of these different um, hypnotic techniques, uh, these mind control techniques having to do with neuro-linguistic programming. So I didn't personally talk to Yogi Bhajan about it, but I do know that Dr. Sakar Paul Singh, Viriam Singh, and um, this Stephen Josephs talked to, to uh, Yogi Bhajan about these mind control uh, hypnotic techniques. So uh, Pamela describes in the video, uh, the clip that you just listened to, how Yogi Bhajan, in fact, told people not to learn this neuro-linguistic programming. This was quite a bit after uh, the meetings that we had there in Bend about the neuro-linguistic programmings and also after the NLP certification that I received in 1980. But Yogi Bhajan, um, I think, decided that he didn't want his students to learn what the techniques were that he was using on his other students, these hypnotic manipulative techniques. That's my belief. And now that I look back at it, I can see how Yogi Bhajan developed this whole practice, uh, techniques for controlling people. He would uh, have people meditate on his picture. He would use these subliminal commands when he would do um, this linguistic uh, audio tapes for people to do this Kundalini Yoga. Um, and he would get them into a really um, deep trance like people doing this uh, heavy breathifier and getting really spaced out and then having them do these layouts where then he would um, project and recite these very subliminal um, commands, uh, very low tone, very um, uh, very hypnotic type of commands, we'll say. And probably some of you have listened to some of these, um, we'll say, uh, audios that Yogi Bhajan created. So what is particularly disturbing is that these type of techniques are, are still used by 3HL. This Hari Jeevan Singh, um, who has a, um, a yoga studio in um, Los Angeles, he was known to us as Hari Jeevan Singh Jr. He's the one who's the toner bandit that uh, was arrested on fraud for uh, uh, sending out uh, toner, um, receipts for toner, uh, uh, oh, invoices for toner, I'm sorry, and uh, without product. Anyway, he was, he was uh, uh, eventually uh, convicted and went to federal prison for 18 months. So. Um, this guy, he continues to use these uh, neuro-linguistic programming techniques and he developed a close relationship with this Richard Bandler. And I know because I worked with this Hari Jeevan for many, many years, um, uh, I think about 15 years at least. And um, I am ashamed to say that I was involved with um, some of these illegal activities of his. Um, and so now I realize that Yogi Bhajan orchestrated a lot of this um, hypnotic uh, and mind control techniques that um, we used in business and um, we used to manipulate people, basically. And what is disturbing is, is how this Hari Jeevan in Los Angeles is still using them in these, these techniques. 
um, in, these, um, in these yoga classes. Uh, this Hari Jeevan just recently produced a video which was very uh, critical, to say the least, or in attacking uh, Pamela and her um, story. Some of you may have seen it, this video that the Sari Jeevan produced. And in that video, he uses classic hypnotic techniques um, of very low tones, and um, you just watch the video, you um, see what I'm talking about. He is um, putting people into a trance so he can give them subliminal messages to um, not believe Pamela and to believe Yogi Bhajan's story. And let's face it, Hari Jeevan has a lot to lose if uh, Yogi Bhajan's credibility is um, destroyed because his whole life is built on the teachings of Yogi Bhajan and these Tantric and Kundalini Yoga uh, teachings. So for all of you who think that Yogi Bhajan uh, gave, a, gave an enlightened um, practice of Kundalini and Tantric Yoga, think about the hidden subliminal messages that are anchored and implanted into these mantras that Yogi Bhajan uh, gave out. I think that if you really look at it closely, you'll see that these mantras that Yogi Bhajan made up, uh, that has been clearly shown now, that Yogi Bhajan made up many of these mantras and these Kundalini Yoga practices and if you look at them closely, they're nothing but a technique for him to get people into his cult, to better induct them into the cult. Like I said, he would have us do these um, layouts where people would be more susceptible uh, to uh, indoctrination into, into his cult. And many of the Kundalini Yoga instructors are doing the same thing, um, whether uh, they're doing it consciously or not, um, whether they know it or not, uh, I believe this is what's really going on in Yogi Bhajan's teachings. That it's nothing more than techniques for him to induct people into his cult. And if you examine now too, these people who are supportive of Yogi Bhajan in this current controversy where a lot of the former followers of Yogi Bhajan are coming out and telling these awful accounts how they were abused both physically, sexually, emotionally, financially, mentally. Um, even when they were children, uh, Yogi Bhajan abused them. If you look at all these accounts, um, the evidence is just overwhelming that Yogi Bhajan abused people, abused his students. But there's a whole group of hardcore followers who are totally loyal to Yogi Bhajan and refuse to uh, believe these um, accounts of abuse. There is a new petition out there that has 3,000 or so signatures on it. And I've read many of the comments and they are just completely uh, loyal to Yogi Bhajan. Uh, this to me shows that they're under this hypnotic trance, if you will. Um, I believe by continuing to do these uh, trance-like mantras and meditations that Yogi Bhajan gave out, that it continually hooks them into this uh, cult and into this um, undying loyalty to Yogi Bhajan. So when people say that Yogi Bhajan's teachings did a lot of good or his Kundalini Yoga works or it does a lot of good, really ask yourself, what kind of good is it creating? Um, it, maybe people have got rid of their addictions 
um, because of Yogi Bhajan's uh, mantras or his uh, kriyas or whatever. Um, but really, when you think about it, addictions can be overcome by replacing it by pretty much any good thing. Um, and so if you're replacing these addictions with some destructive cult um, attraction or loyalty uh, around Yogi Bhajan or around um, his teachings, you really, I think, should look at uh, your um, practices more closely and see if it's really what you want. So this completes uh, the video in hypnotic and mind control techniques. Uh, please read the description. I'll put some links to some of the things, videos I've been talking about. And I've talked about many of the other abuses um, that Yogi Bhajan did to his students in some of the other videos. And more, I talk about them in more detail in some of the other videos. Uh, but in this video, I wanted you to really understand that Yogi Bhajan was really a destructive uh, yogi, that he used these mind control and hypnotic techniques all for, his, for power, money, and sex. That's what he used them for. Thank you for your time. Why Gujika Kalsa? Why Gujiki Fateh?